Hi everyone, welcome. I know it's been a while. If you saw my most recent post on my community tab or my most recent video, you'll kind of know what happened there. Long story short, life got in the way in the form of a new job. It's been very taxing mentally, so I just kind of had to put this little hobby of mine aside for a second and focus on getting up to speed with that new job and getting the hang of things. But I'm at a point now where I'm able to, you know, have that extra time, that mental clarity to pursue my creative outlets, one of which is YouTube. I love it here, I love creating. And so what I thought um, I could do for you guys today is, I'll put it this way. This is gonna be a long video and I'm very excited for that because I personally love watching sewers create a garment from start to finish. Like I wanna see the whole process. I wanna see the drafting. I wanna see the mock-ups. I wanna see the mistakes. I wanna see everything. I love being on that journey with somebody and seeing something come from ideation to creation. I have this beautiful, not this one here, this one down here, I have this beautiful wool fabric. I have been dreaming of a chocolate brown wool vintage inspired skirt for the winter. So I will be documenting the process of making that from A to Z. Every little nook and cranny of this project, I'm going to document. Um, what the skirt will feature, I want it to be high-waisted, of course. Uh, I want it to have an elastic back, just the back. I want it to have a side zip with a lapped zipper, belt loops so I can wear a belt, and it's gonna be lined. So that is my plan for the skirt. I am very excited. I'm not using a pattern, so I will be showing you how I create this literally from my head, and you can follow these instructions too if you wanna make this for yourself. It could literally be applied to any body sizes. So enough chitter chatter. If you end up liking this video, please make sure to interact with the video in some way. That could be in the form of giving it a thumbs up or a comment or sharing it with your friends, your sewer friends. Please be sure to subscribe if you wanna stick around and see more projects. And with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in because it's gonna be a long one. I know first off I want to do a half circle skirt. So that is going to be a shape like this. If you don't know what I mean by that, I would go ahead and Google full circle skirt, half circle skirt, quarter circle skirt, three quarter circle skirt, I forgot that one, A line skirt. Just look at all the different types of skirts and um, how much fabric that consists of and how it drapes over your hips. It kind of gives you a gauge of how full you want, you want your skirt to be. And after looking at some pictures, I just know that I'm going for a half circle skirt in particular for this look. And so a half circle skirt is literally a piece of fabric that is cut like this in the shape of half of a circle with a little shape cut out for your waist. Just because it's half of a circle, it actually will go around your entire body. So at the end of the day, this line right here from point to point is going to be the circumference of your waist. This piece will wrap entirely around your waist. So I know that for me, I'm a 28 inch waist, and I know this is super tiny, but I'll sketch these pieces out bigger once we get to it. So for me, from here to here, that's gonna be 28 inches. I also know that I want two seams. If you were just doing a regular circle skirt, you probably would not need two seams. You could get away with doing just one big piece and doing a center back seam to connect these two pieces here with a zipper and call it a day. However, because I want half of my waistband to be elasticized on the back, I need to have two seams. So I know at the end of the day, something is gonna happen like this. I'm gonna have to have this big piece get divided into two. And one of these will be the front and one of these will be the back. I've got one piece like this and I've got another one like this. And each of those two pieces consists of this half circle. So let's just call this the front and the back. Now remember I said before, this measurement here should be your waist circumference. And for me, that's 28. So let's go ahead and put a 14 here and a 14 here, just for now. And this is without seam allowances so far. But because I just wanna make things more complicated and I wanna have the back half of the skirt be elasticized at the waist, I need to account for that extra width. I have a skirt that I own separately here to show you. The front is not elasticized, the back is. These two measurements look exactly the same, right? Like I got a seam here, I got a seam here. They look exactly the same, but they're not because there's elastic in this back half. And as I stretch this, I can see, oh, this piece of fabric, if I did not have the elastic, when I would just lay it down flat, it would be a lot bigger. And that's to account for that stretch. Off camera, 
I've gone ahead and measured. Like I went and I stretched this out one by one all the way through and I measured the length of that back waist dimension. What I got was 18. So I'm gonna cross this out and I'm gonna put an 18 for the back, just the back. When I add 14 and 18, my new waist circumference is now 32. The whole reason I'm doing a back elastic is because I don't know about you, but I have very severe waist fluctuations. One day I could be 28 and literally the next day I could be 30. I don't know why, it is what it is. But that's why I love pants, shorts, skirts that have that elastic in the back because it, it can look tailored in the front, but I also have the flexibility of that waist fluctuation with the elastic in the back. On one of your bad bloating days, I want you to measure your waist and see how much it fluctuates and make sure that this new measurement will account for that fluctuation. Now, if you don't have a skirt, that you can take measurements from. I would just increase this by what? Let's take a look. Here, let's do this. I had 14 to begin with, and I added four to that to get the new bigger measurement of 18. That's a difference of four. So I'm gonna do four divided by 14, and that's about 29%, let's call it 30%. What you can do, if you don't have a skirt to compare, is whatever you got for this original number, just increase that by 130% of the original measurement. So 130% of 14 is 18. As far as the length of the skirt, that'll be this dimension right here. I'm not worried about that yet because that is limited by the width of my fabric. And that I won't know till I start cutting it out. So I'm not even gonna worry about that right now. I, just for the sake of being safe, I'm gonna do one inch seam allowances on my side seams. On this side, this side, this side and this side. I need to add one inch to that. And that will affect my waist. This 14 will actually become 16 if I add one inch on one side and one inch on the other. This 18 will become 20. If I put those two pieces back together now, ooh, that was a terrible sketch. If I put those two pieces together, these two that I've sketched out, and I add 16 and I add 20, what do I get? 36, yeah, that's 36. What I can do at this point is I can cut out a, ha a, a half circle of fabric. I can cut this out as one piece where the measurement from here to here is 36. Now this line right here will not end up being cut down the middle and we'll get to that in a second when we're cutting on the floor. What we can do after this is, and I'll show you, literally I'm gonna show you every single step of how I do this. We can get on a computer and we can search for a tool, like a, I think it's a pie calculator or something. We will be able to figure out how to fold our fabric and just literally measure it on the floor folded to get this correct dimension. So let's go to a computer. Let's search for a tool we can use. So I'm editing right now and I just want to come in here and explain that this is not to be taken as a tutorial. However, at this point I seem very confident, so I'm presenting it as a tutorial. <laughs> but you'll see in a few minutes some things go awry. There's some of my QA staff right there. Some things go awry and you'll see me troubleshoot it in real time and how I solve the problems, which is the point of this video. I wanted to keep the mistakes in. So I'm just warning you. It might seem confusing while I work out some of these problems, but if you watch the whole thing, you'll see how I fix the problems, and I think you'll benefit from it because you'll know what to look out for. So just disclaimer, it, it will make sense later. Okay, it turns out Mood Fabrics has exactly what we need here. So what I want you to do is go to this website, moodfabrics.com slash circle skirt hyphen calculator. Select circle skirt fullness, this is important. Go ahead and put half, since we're doing a half circle skirt, and waist measurement. Now this is gonna be that final measurement we came up with, and I came up with 36. So I will put 36 inches, and I will calculate. This is the number right here I was looking for. 10.82 inches for the waist radius. That sounds a little obscure right now. Why do I need a radius if we've been talking about circumferences? The radius is, it's half of the diameter, right, of a circle. It's just gonna tell us how to draft our pattern directly on the fabric right before we cut it out. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Whatever this measurement comes out to for you, go ahead and write that down. You're gonna need it and you're gonna need it for when we cut out our fabric.
Also, I need to introduce you to the newest member of the family. This is Farmy, which is apparently short for Faramir. That's apparently from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I did not name him. I think he got pawned on us and we just kind of fell for it. <laughs> My in-laws, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, wonderful people. Literally in their wedding vows, they said that they were gonna do anything they could to help animals. They kind of got to a point where they had rescued so many animals. Like I think they had a litter of cats in the garage. They had like five cats inside, something like that. They just had too many. And one day my sister-in-law said, um, can you just babysit Farmy for a bit? Our house is packed. And we were like, uh, okay. And he's never gone back. He's been here ever since. Um, you can see he's very rambunctious. I don't actually call him Farmy. I call him Little Boy. I don't know why, I just, I like calling him that and it's kind of stuck. I don't know if he'll be here long term, but he's here for now. And I'm gonna have to put him up or else I literally won't be able to get anything done. <laughs> Right here, I am just folding my fabric selvage to selvage, which is the edges of the fabric. And I'm smoothing all the wrinkles out, making sure it's nice and smooth, no puckering, no wrinkles, so it's nice and straight on the grain. Okay, I am coming across my first issue that I will work out live with you. I'm folding this out, getting ready to cut it, and I'm seeing already. This fabric is really narrow. <sighs> I will explain what I had planned, and then I will explain what I'm going to do to remedy my issue. What I had planned, was to cut the whole half circle piece while it's folded in half, just to make my life easier. And the way to do that was to, you fold the fabric selvage to selvage, to selvage which I have done, square up an end perpendicular to the selvage so you have a right angle here. So let's just pretend I've done that. And then what you would do is you would take that radius measurement we got off the computer, which was 10 something, I don't remember. And we would cut out a quarter circle shape right here. Let's just say it was 10 and a half. I know it's not, but I just can't remember. Let's, let's say it's 10 and a half. So you would measure 10 and a half, make a mark here. Measure 10 and a half, make a mark here. 10 and a half, make a mark here. But that, 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 and then you would chase that quarter circle shape, you would cut that out. And when you unfold it, when all is said and done, you would get that half circle shape with the waist part already cut out to the correct waist circumference. That's what that tool was online. The reason I'm saying this won't work is because if I cut that out from here to the edge of my fabric, this is not folded, right? This is the edge of my fabric. That's all I have to work with. That is only 20 inches. So 20 inches from my waist is barely knee length. And I want it to be longer than that. So this is what I was saying about how your fabric width limits the length of your skirt. My only options at this point are number one, piece it together, meh. You could save fabric, but I don't want a pieced skirt. Or number two, cut each half of my circle skirt out separately, which I think I will do. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut my fabric in half it will give me the fabric I can play with for my front piece of my skirt and the fabric allowance for the back half of my skirt. Okay, so I'm jumping around a little probably in the video in the final edit. So I went to moodfabrics.com, used this measurement, right? I told you earlier, marked this radius out. I was getting ready to cut and something just looked off. So then I was like, hmm, does this include seam allowance? When they ask for your measurement of your waist, does that include seam allowance or no? What are they asking? And I can't find any information about that. So I thought, hmm, let me try another circle skirt app. So let's try this one and see what it says. Midi, half circle inches, my waist is 36. See, this is saying my waist radius is 11. It's different. Let's see what another one says. Okay, let's do half circle skirt, waist inches, skirt length. I've, I've just been going with 30. That's about what I'm guesstimating. Waist 36. Okay, here we go. This is saying something different. This is saying 10.6. The first one said 10.8. The second one said 11. What's the next one say? I want a half circle skirt in inches with a waist of 36, a length, skirt length of 30. Oh, this accounts for seam allowance. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. 
This is interesting because they're probably assuming there's only going to be one seam in their half circle. I'm doing two seams. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what to do. So essentially what's happening is I'm getting a bunch of different answers and I'm confused what to do now. So let's go back to the drawing board and reassess what to do from here because I don't know what to trust right now. <laughs> And I told you I wanted to, you know, keep this true to real life, how I would troubleshoot something like this in real life. So I'm not keeping anything out. This is exactly what's happening in real time. Looking at this now, it's clear there's two problems going on. Number one, I actually still do not know why I kept getting so many different answers on all of those different websites. If you know, let me know. Number two, the reason I was getting so confused is because if I were to cut out the two pieces separately, which is the new plan at this point, the waist radius is actually different for each piece because the waist measurement is different for each piece. That wasn't going to be a factor in the first plan because I had planned to cut it out all in one piece, then separate it into two with those two separate measurements in mind. I hope that makes sense. I feel like it makes more sense now in retrospect, hindsight's 2020, but wanted to put this in here to help clarify. So here's what my new approach is going to be just for the front piece. Let's just focus on the front. I know the front, I need it to be from edge to edge, 16 inches. This length right here, 16 inches. Let's measure what it is now. This is about 17, it's like 16 and three quarters. And I need it to be 16, which should be right around here. So what I'm gonna do, because I can't figure out what the freaking waist radiuses are supposed to be, I'm just gonna scooch these back a bit. What I'm gonna try this time is 10 and a quarter. <laughs> this is so dumb, I'm just keeping it real with you guys. I just can't figure out this waist radius thing. So I'm gonna try a waist radius of 10 and a quarter. So let me just readjust all these quickly. Okay, we're getting closer. That is 16 and a quarter. So I'm just gonna move these down a tiny bit. This is so dumb. That's about 16. Good Lord. We're gonna have a seam allowance of an inch and then we're gonna have an, uh, a seam allowance of an inch. These two inches here will be tucked in the seam allowances and then this right here is 14 inches, which is the front half of my waist. Whoo, okay. So now let's see what length we can get out of this. From the edge of the fabric to that pin, we've got about 31 and a half, which that's good. That's about what I wanted. So we're just gonna go with a length of 31 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut along this line here. No, don't do that. I'm not accounting for seam allowance if I cut straight on that line, that's the seam line. So I should have said I will cut whatever my seam allowance was away from that line. That line is the seam. Ugh. And then I'm gonna go as far as the fabric will allow me and cut the circle shape there. Hopefully you're seeing the relationship of the waist radius. So this measurement here I was doing to mark all these pins. Hopefully you're seeing the relationship between that and this length. The longer the waist radius, the more you're gonna get on this line here. And it keeps pushing this arc here. The longer the waist radius gets, it keeps pushing it this way. The reason I wanna point that out is because when I cut my back piece, remember, I have to cut this length on the back a little longer to account for that elastic, which means this will be pushed out further this way, which means I'll have less, less skirt length for the back. My skirt back is gonna be shorter in length to the floor than the front, but we'll deal with that later. It'll just be a couple inches. It won't be a big deal. This part here is on the bias. And remember, we've been working really hard to get this measurement exactly what we wanted, this length. Be really careful once you cut this out, not to stretch this. It's really delicate right here, especially if you have a, loose and wo a loosely woven fabric. Oh my God, I'm cutting this terribly. Just like I did with this line, I'm gonna go do, 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 all the way around and then I'll cut that shape out. So we just cut out this front piece. Remember it was 14 plus the one inch plus the one inch. So we measured a final arc of 16. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the back, 
but I'm going to do it for a final arc of 20. Couldn't tell you what that waist radius is. I feel like the tools were led me down online, so I'm just going to play around and I'm going to guess. I'm going to do the same exact technique. So next we need to cut out the waist band. We could just cut out a long rectangle to serve as my waistband. However, I know from previous experience that straight waistbands just do not sit nicely and snugly on my waist. What fits better for me are curved waistbands. These are really easy to draft from this and I'll explain how to do that. I've just cut out a scrap rectangle to show you. What you can do is literally get a piece of paper that is that measurement. What do, what do we have? 36, right? This could be your waistband pattern. Then you can fold it in half, wrap it around your skirt, and that could be your waistband. But to make this curved, all you do, and I couldn't tell you how much, there's no standard measurement that I can tell you. But what you can do is if you have this on your waist and there's like at the top circumference of the waistband, so the very top line of the fabric at the fold, if there's any like gappage, like if it's sticking out away from your body, you can like pinch a little bit of it. And what that would result in is a curve. Now that looks really shoddy, but basically you would pinch that and whatever pinched amount you have, you could slice this in half. And maybe here, and maybe here. It, like, it doesn't matter where you slash. This is a technique called slash and spread. Let's say you, um, you pinched at the top at three quarters of an inch. So you would overlap this by a quarter of an inch like that, this by a quarter of an inch, and this by a quarter of an inch. To total three quarters of an inch, you would tape all that down. It's gonna look shoddy right now. But then long story short, that would be your curved, waist pan, your curved waistband pattern piece. This measurement down here is still 36. And then this one would be the new circumference at like the higher part of your waist. I already coincidentally have a pattern piece I have drafted using that same exact method. I'm just gonna pull that out and I'm gonna use it. There's lots of tutorials online for how to do this. Now remember, one other thing I do have to point out, here, let me just go ahead and tape this so I can show you. Since it's curved, I can't just fold it in half. That doesn't match up. So curved waistbands will always be cut into two pieces. They would be cut in half this way. You would add seam allowances here and make sure to add your seam allowances on these ends as well so you can attach them to your skirt. So you'd sew it like this, da 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 da, press, and then go like this. And then the, the edges would be tucked in at the top and like that. And I'll demonstrate that when we get to actually sewing it, but just wanted to point that out. You can't just fold a curved waistband in half. It doesn't work like that. Right here I've got my fabric folded in half along the grain and I am tracing out my pattern piece that I referred to earlier, my curved waistband pattern. Again, you can watch my video I linked in the top right earlier to see how I made it. And this pattern piece does not have seam allowances. So you can see I'm cutting slightly around the edge of the pattern piece. And I'm actually going to cut further than what the pattern piece is drafted for, just for some extra insurance in case I need that extra length if I mess anything up. Y'all, I was laying in bed last night thinking about this project and I realized something. This is um, one of the skirt pieces. That's the waistline. Y'all let me cut right on that seam line. You didn't tell me to put a seam allowance. So this is entirely your fault. <laughs> I was laying in bed and my eyes just shot wide open when I realized I cut right on that seam line. It's not gonna be a big deal though. This is why I wanted an inch seam allowance. I just knew something like this would happen. So what I can do is I can just shift down a little bit, like half an inch, make that my new seam line. And I'll just have to adjust the seam allowance and like taper it out. The first thing I'm going to do, because I mentioned how this is on the bias, it'll stretch out, is I'm gonna do a stay stitch on that on both um, of my skirt pieces. I actually currently have a walking foot on this machine. This will be a good application for using that so it doesn't stretch out the seam line. Wow, this is a jagged cut I just did. Y'all just sat there and watched me do a bad cut and you watched me do it in the wrong spot. I cannot believe you. So if you can't see what the walking foot does, this is a walking foot here. Sometimes when you're doing a project, you actually don't want the pressure, like the pressure of the presser foot pressing down too much on the fabric. It can actually be of detriment. And so what a walking foot does is, it's kind of in the name, you can see it kind of with every stitch jogging upwards, it's releasing some of that pressure. 
and it's just slowly walking over the fabric instead of like really pressing it down. And the reason I wouldn't want it to press down in this case is because it might stretch out this seam line, this waistline, which we don't want. And I'm also being careful not to stretch this too much as I'm just letting the feed dogs, the little things under that grab the fabric, I'm just letting it do, do its work. I'm not like pulling it through or pushing it through or stretching this out. And I'm not even measuring the seam allowance I'm using here. I'm just trying to go a little under half an inch. So now this won't get stretched out too much as I work. So I'll do the other side now. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I'm at a point where I'm not too entirely sure what to do next, not that confident. So I'm just proceeding with like little steps that I know I have to do. Like I know I have to interface one of the waistband pieces. I've been watching videos about how to do half elastic waistbands, but yeah, I'm just not entirely sure because I've never done it. Just tack it on there a little bit. Trim the excess, and now that I've trimmed the rest, I can really glue it down. And I'll just keep going with the rest of the waistband. Next, I am sewing just the uh, top seam of the waistbands. Okay, just checking my seam allowance there. Oh my gosh, my bobbin just became empty. Yes, good luck. All right, here's the skirt I got from the thrift store. Polyester, unfortunately, but it was super cheap fabric for me for this project, so I couldn't say no. And I'm looking at it and it's got elastic in the back. I can observe how this was constructed to help me with mine. Because like I said earlier, I'm getting to a point where I'm just confused and I don't know how to proceed. And I didn't realize the skirt was also half elastic. <laughs> Sorry, little boy. Oh, there we go. This <gasps> such a good boy. I need to prep for sewing the side seams now of just my outer layer. So right now these are right sides together. So even though this is on the right side of the skirt, this will be the left side when it's worn. I know what I need to do is mark where the zipper is gonna stop. So I've got the pull up here. I've got it kind of just sitting around where my seam line will be for the waistband, which I'm just gonna do half an inch. So I'm just eyeballing that. And then what I'll do here is put a pin where that stop was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna touch up here. I'm just gonna leave that open. And then from here down, I'm going to do my side seam, but to make matters more complicated. If you recall, I said earlier I was gonna do one inch seams. I can't do that now because I was a dum-dum and I cut my skirt pieces right on that waistband line. To alleviate that issue, I have to obviously give myself a seam allowance. When I do that, the length of the waist gets screwy. So long story short, I actually have to make my seam allowance a little bigger to shrink that waistline. So basically I have to taper from one and a half inches all the way down to one inch. So I know down here I have a one inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna mark that with a pin and it doesn't have to be super exact, it's not crucial. And I know up here I have one and a half inches. I will just mark that. And I'm gonna taper from a one and a half two, one. So wherever that falls, that's where I'm gonna start my seam. 
And again, it doesn't have to be exact. And I'll just do a couple more of those markings to guide myself. This is my seam line now. It tapers from one and a half inches down to the original one inch. This is just a correction to my screw up of how I cut my skirt pieces wrong. So I'm gonna sew from this pin, follow these pins down all the way to the bottom one. Um, on the other side, I don't have a zipper. So I would just go from here down. So let's go do that at the machine. So I was not feeling confident in my ability to do a lapped zipper. I watched tons of tutorials, but I just wanted to do a practice run. So that's what you're looking at here. And I think for a first attempt, I did pretty well. So if you don't know what a lapped zipper is, this fold right here, this just tucks the zipper over to the side a little bit from that seam line. And then that seam line just becomes a fold and it folds over the zipper. And I love garments with this. I've just, I don't know why I haven't done it before when I make them myself. I had one little hiccup down here. There's like a little bubble. So I sewed in this side, that was super easy. But then when I did the left side, I don't know if you can, there's like a bubble. Like I would need to ease quite a bit in there. It's not laying flat. And the reason for that is when I sewed the left side, I started from the top and went down. The pressure from the presser foot, like basically like pushed that fabric down all the way till I got a bubble down here and it just wasn't gonna lay flat. So I know for next time on the, when I do the second side, I need to start from the bottom and go up. It is cold today, you guys. I'm going to be working in my robe. <laughs> my laundry's done. So I've turned the skirt right side out. This is the side seam. This is the front of the skirt. This is the back. And I wanted the front to overlap on the back. And that's what I've done here. It looks right. It should be overlapped by like an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. I'm gonna give it a press. <gasps> Why did the color change? What the f Are y'all seeing that? The color changed. I don't know if that's like a moisture thing or what, but now I'm scared. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the zipper so that this right side will get sewed just along the right edge of the zipper. But I am gonna make sure to start from here up so I don't get any weird bubbles like I did with my practice round. We have got the left side of the zip in. So the next step is to sew the other side. So I'm just gonna lay this over just let it lay how it wants and i'm going to pin that to the other side of the zip and i'll make sure this time see on the the mock-up what happened i got weird bubbling because when i did the second side i started sewing from here this direction down here and it like pressed the fabric till i got a weird bubble like that so what i need to do this time is start down here and go up Okay, I'm getting very excited. I just tried it on and it's almost going too perfect that I'm worried <laughs> about the future steps. It looks so cute. I'm worried about bulk at the waist um, and I want that to look slim, of course. So instead of both of these ends of the waistband being tucked in, which is like four layers of fabric there, one will be tucked in. Like this is the part that will get attached to the skirt. So that will go tucked in, that will fold. But then this side, I'm just gonna leave it hanging over and I'm gonna finish that raw edge with some binding. I have a ton of this red binding from a project I never did, it's just sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and just while it's easy to maneuver, while, it's, um, while the waistband is free, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this onto the, the edge that will not be sewn onto the skirt.
I had to iron out some kinks with this waistband. I've never done a waistband with the bias binding like this. I don't know how to finish this off, the binding itself. Like that's just a raw edge right there. The only thing I can think of to do is like tuck this under a bit, like do a little mitre right there, but I'm worried it'll get in the way of the zipper. And this other side of the waistband, I need it to have a tab. So I'll probably just eyeball a line right here to sew on, tuck the edges under, and then that'll be my tab. It'll be like this. And it won't matter that's, that this is sticking out because it's gonna be on the underside of the other one. Let me just go ahead and eyeball this. Yeah, it'll be something like this. Oh God, this looks ugly. What do I do? Hmm, I don't know what to do. Okay, so this is how it looks when it's zipped up. Not terrible. And then I unzip. Oh, this looks bad. I don't know what to do. Okay, I need to think. All right, so off camera, I pressed this really well, this waistband. It's laying nice and flat. It looks great, honestly. And now I'm at the part where I'm doing the elastic. I went ahead and cut a piece of elastic. It's attached at one side seam. So now I just need to attach it on the other side. This is not easy to do. So I have it pinned. Now I just need to stitch it on the waistband right at that line. Oh, good. I can't see it from the outside. How am I gonna do this? Oh, golly. Oh, golly. What is this, 1920? Doesn't look so pretty, but this is the side that will be tucked under anyway, so it'll be covered up. I have the cutest little labels that I bought from Etsy. Isn't that so cute? So my battery died, so while the battery was charging, I went ahead and stitched the waistband together. And it's looking so good. The only thing I'm a little unhappy with, and it's only gonna be a problem for me because it's on the inside of the garment, is I stitched in the ditch to um, do the waistband. And on the back, like here, I'll show you the front. On the front of the waistband, it looks great. Like that looks fabulous with my little tag. Oh my God, it's so cute. But then on the back, I did not account for the extra fabric the elastic would have to take up just because you know it's thick, it has dimension to it. So my stitching doesn't look that great. But I'm gonna be the only one that sees that. But the front looks fantastic. I was planning on doing a buttonhole. So I was gonna do a buttonhole here, put a button here, and then just close it like that and zip it up. But this fits pretty snug right now which I'm okay with because this is wool and I anticipate with the, the body heat of my body wearing this snugly, I think it will stretch out. And then I'm scared though, if this will stretch out, will the buttonhole itself stretch out? Like with the stress of a button being here and this pulling, pulling, pulling with the heat of my body. And I don't know how to repair a buttonhole that's too big. So if it stretches out too big, I could be screwed. So I'm a little bit squeamish about doing a buttonhole. I could do one of the, the like latch hook things, but that means I'd have to go back to Joanne's, which I guess I never mind a trip back to Joanne's. But anyway, other than that, I'll have to do the belt loops and then I'll do the hem, which I can't remember if I mentioned, I let it hang for 24 hours, my skirt, so that the bias parts of the skirt could have ample time to stretch out. So now that they've done that, I can go ahead and do the hem as well, and then I'll be done.
fire season again And the ash in the air is my eyes stinging And I can hear the winter slowly awakening The mountains are my only goal So I can shed my skin and be made whole In the crisp air and the red clay will be my salvation And sets in with the early frost And the things that I've loved Are the things I've lost The wheat from the chaff The sheep from the goats This year I am becoming my own home This year I am becoming my own Thank you.